So, yeah, it's based on a true story, my understanding of which it was the first clandestine mission in modern times. And let's call it, I was going to say this century, but the last one. Um, and it gave birth to special forces in uh, various countries, America, um, New Zealand, Australia, and the UK. I'm not sure if there's anything else in that equation. But yeah, it gave birth to all of that. And, and you, they started to realize how effective um, special forces could be. So that in itself is enough of a story. And I suppose it was, it was a story about the odds. The odds were, you know, preposterously against them. Um, and that's just, that's great aggregate for fun storytelling. I think what has to happen is you have to, you have to understand the characteristics of the historical characters that you're playing, the fundal, fundamental character of the, um, of the role that your actors are then playing. As long as you understand the fundamental essence of who they are, then everything else sorts itself from there. The character sort of writes its own script and its own story, if you will. They write their own character. So you, ju you do have to do some historical research on, on who those characters are. And then, as I say, they, the characters themselves almost give birth to their own dialogue just by the benefit of understanding the fundamental character of who the historical character was. I made a movie previously with Henry called uh, Man from Uncle, which I enjoy very much. Henry and I get on, we work on well together. I think he trusts me and he just had the requisite um, characteristics that I thought we could elicit together. So he just, it just sort of made sense really. He understood the character very quickly. Uh, and once he understood the character, then most of the work was done. Aza was so enthusiastic uh, initially about acquiring this role. And uh, enthusiasm goes a long way in, in my world. So she was enthusiastic. She was confident that she could do the RP, the accent, um, at, which is not easy to do. Uh, she pulled that off very well. So it was really just a question of, um, did I believe that she could do it, right? And she could, and she made that, she demonstrated her ability to embody that personality. Uh, very quickly. So it, it really it wasn't a complicated choice. Uh, Alan played Anders Lassen. Anders Lassen is seen as one of the pioneer uh, characters that the SBS founded their ethos upon, which is a, a form of controlled and trained and experienced madness. Um, and Alan sort of understood that character pretty quickly. And funny enough, all the characters really managed to, I would have said within minutes, understood exactly what those characters were going to be. I mean, we wrote most of the dialogue on the day. All the, all the actors were up for that. And uh, as I said previously, as long as you understand who those characters are and they're modeling on who they're modeling that, their, their character upon, then really all the work was done. Um, that was the most important thing, is for them to understand who their historical character was based upon. And Anders Lassen, who was a Danish aristocrat, I seem to remember, um, that found himself on these shores for one reason or another, was clearly, clearly quite brilliant at manifesting appalling things, which was quite necessary to manifest at that period in time. Uh, he's a pleasure to work with, Jerry. It's a pleasure to work with. He's obviously incredibly experienced. Um, a, a rather gentle soul, um, interested in creativity, very easy to work with, very collaborative, and it's rather interesting to have such a legend, someone that's so experienced and such a lover of film. I think, first and foremost, is, is, is to understand and appreciate 
the love and knowledge of film that Jerry Bruckheimer has. It's quite unique. Where you really want to end up is in the world of people that are passionate about their jobs. Jerry is like wildly passionate about his vocation and is as excited now. I can't, I can't imagine that he was any more excited in his youth because it's quite hard to be more excited than he is now. So really, first and foremost, he's a lover of film and um, it, it doesn't wish in any way to undermine the director. He's, he's rather cunning like that. Uh, and I mean cunning in a, a very positive way. He's there really to you know, collaborate and, and assist in as many ways as he can. Really, he's just a sort of perfect partner in film. Really what you want is just partners that are collaborative and generous, really, in the filmmaking process. And Jerry was all of those things, experienced, collaborative, positive, um, and certainly not lazy. Should be on HMS Belfast. I think I went on there in 1975 with my mum, um, where it looked comparatively modern. So, and it's lived on the Thames. I can get there at about 15 minutes on my bicycle from here. Um, it's one of those things that's, that sat there as a, as a London landmark for as long as I've been around. Um, and then when you, fi you find out how many times that boat has circumnavigated the globe, um, that induces some respect for it. Uh, I mean, you, you'd have no idea that, you know, we shot that 15 minutes from here in the middle of London. Um, that was rather useful having a, the authentic bit of kit 15 minutes from here. Uh, selfishly, I wanted to tell a story about the Second World War because that is the spaghetti westerns and Second World War films were what I was weaned on. Um, and the idea that I could take a sojourn into the the creative world of, of storytelling in the genre, it's a natural fit, principally because it, it was where the genesis of my interest in films came from. If you're going for the full experience, you've just got to go to the cinema to have the full experience. I don't think there's any ambiguity about that. It's, not, it's also the sound. The sound that reverberates through your body elicits a completely different experience. So a 40-foot screen as opposed to a 14-inch screen plus the complication of creating and sophistication of creating the sound. I don't think people really understand what goes into a sound mix um, and it's a massive part of filmmaking is the sound mix process. It takes forever, costs a fortune and you have very very clever people that do this for a long time. So to really enjoy the full audio experience you can only really do that at the cinema. So the, the complete experience, um, it's, it's really worth going to the cinema for.